Let's kick your Thanksgiving turkey up a notch. We dry brined it for the first time, and we put it on the Searwood XL from Weber. We put it on the rotisserie. This thing came out fantastic. Let's go. Wet brine or dry brine? Throughout the years, I've told you a thousand times, I swear by wet brine. Today might change. We'll be open and honest about it, just like we have all the other things we've done. Today's a dry brine. As long as I think as the word brine is in there, I'm on board, okay? This recipe will be on pelletsandpits.com. Dry brine it is. The zest of one whole lemon. Rosemary. Thyme. Black pepper. And garlic. Just give that a quick mix. Mix all that zest up in there. Traditionally... A brine would just be like basically your salt. You could just do a dry salt brine overnight. But I thought the lemon would help. And we like black pepper on our turkey. I want to go ahead and season it now. I do not want to season it when we rotisserie it. Because I want that seasoning to have a chance to stick. Because I'm worried about the basting. Okay, so there's different methods behind the madness. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. But that's my idea. I don't want to season it or poke it. Put on the rotisserie and then all of a sudden start basting an hour later. I want this season to try to stick as much as possible. That's why I'm doing it like this. We have your average young turkey. It's been thawed out and it's been patted down. I removed the giblets on the inside and simply we're just going to season it pretty liberally. In the refrigerator it goes uncovered overnight until we start smoking it tomorrow and you guys know the deal you know i'm rocking the smoking pecan pellets as always we're gonna try it about 3 uh 25. got the smoker up and whoo there it goes got the smoker up and going and this is what we got beautiful looking bird it smells fantastic the skin is absolutely dried out could not be happier with what we did so here is our rotisserie stick. Right through the guts it goes. If you got the bird on there, I'm just gonna tie it to secure it. On a rotisserie, it's kind of difficult. So. Once you're done, just clip the strings. I might put one right here just in case, just for added protection. Cause once that bad boy goes, we're gonna leave it alone. Yeah, that was probably a smart move. Right, it doesn't take long for the Weber searwood to get up to tail. There we go. Looking good. So really quickly, this is the neck. The fat part of the tail and some extra fat I trimmed off the turkey. We did uh, smoked buffalo wings uh, the other day. I saved the tips of the wings. It's that time of year. While they were smoking, I had them on my smoker as well. So you're going to see these on the smoker when we start basting the turkey. So I'm going to go ahead and smoke those and save those for Thanksgiving Day. Okay. One stick of butter. We have your traditional poultry style um, herb selection, thyme sage and rosemary i'm gonna use the rosemary as a basing brush for the um for the turkey so simply enough we're just going to rough chop the sage put in our butter same thing with a thyme 
I'm not worried about the leaves because obviously we're just flavoring the butter. This will go on the smoker. Now we're rocking 325, 325 right now, so it won't take long. But uh, once it's melted, I'll be able to pull and put it back on and all that stuff. It's extremely cold outside, so it might harden up. If it does, we'll just put it back on the smoker to melt it. But that's our basting liquid right there. If I wasn't clear, this is gonna be used for my stock, my gravy for Thanksgiving. Alrighty, about an hour and a half later, I got my Chef Temp meat probes put in there. Got that rosemary, got a little butter. And simply enough, we're just gonna baste. Got a long ways to go. I gotta tell you, just from the color alone, it looks absolutely fantastic. I've been basting it on and off, obviously with this butter. And you can see that the rosemary, when it sits on the grill, just naturally infuses in that butter. Remember, we got the thyme and the sage. You might want to save this when you carve the turkey if you wanted to, but I mean, that just looks absolutely fantastic. Letting it rest is crucial. We're going to let it rest, do its thing, and we'll slice it up. To be honest with you, pretty impressed. Absolutely beautiful color. Uh, cranking that temp up just to let you know above 300, roughly 325, helps render that fat out a lot more. I'm a big fan of when I go in the oven, maybe 275, even on the smoker, 275 is kind of like my sweet spot. I might like 325, I don't know. The smells are amazing. So I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. Remember we mentioned about wet brine versus dry brine. So let me just carve into this bad boy really quick. I know you guys can't see. Let's see if I can get in here. I mean, I... <laughs> Juicy turkey. Find that wishbone right there. And you wish it would come out. <laughs> oh, you broke it. <laughs> All righty. Let's open her up, see what we got here. That is absolutely beautiful. There we go. I don't know if you can get that in the image. But this is one hell of a bird. Oh yeah. Oh man. Just look at it. Oh my gosh. All right, enough talking. Enough talking. Enough talking. <laughs> that looks Just incredible. Look juicy that is. Golly. I'm excited to dive into this one. Mmm. Mmm. I do not think the flavorings were able to penetrate. Not That's like true. a wet brine. I was just going to say, I'm still a wet brine fan. You do the same thing, just wet brine it instead. Mmm. <gasps> you know the funny thing is, since we didn't wet brine, this is the first time we've tasted pure turkey in a long time. Yeah, I know. That mm. doesn't taste flavorful. Yeah. Oh, look at this good looking turkey. Because like that Cajun wet brine that we did, I mean, that tasted like Cajun turkey. Yep. Once I clean all the meat off the carcass, I actually will save the carcass. So along with those tips from the um, wings that we cooked the other day, the neck, some of the fat stuff, I'm able to make a fantastic flavorful stock. 
got to be careful. If you do like a apple brine or a um, Cajun brine, the carcass really isn't worth the crap after you use it. Just because those flavors have penetrated so much, it's not really a good aftertaste flavor. This was a good way to do it because we're so close to that uh, Thursday for Thanksgiving that um, we'll be able to repurpose this everything. Everything. The bones and everything? Oh, yeah. stock? Yeah. For gravy? That's probably one of the juiciest ones I've cooked. I'm yeah. on board at 325. I'm on board with the rotisserie. If you guys have live fire rotisserie, that would probably be even better. I'm sure you could hear just a little bit more flavor. But that right there. And no matter what you do, please just cook your... Golly. <laughs> Please just cook your turkeys to the right temp. Don't overcook them. And you can have some fantastic turkey like that. Probably the best turkey of the year would be my guess. If so it far. was wet bread. So far. So far. <laughs> it's perfectly cooked. cooked, yes. The best cooked. As always, we've got a special for you. Well, wife's going to cook her first turkey. That's right. <laughs> We're going to put her behind the camera. I'm going to be in front of the camera. We've done it several times on the Flat Top King, my other channel. She does very sporadically slash few videos on that channel, and this will be her first debut. Can Amy cook a turkey? That will be the name of the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Don't forget to press the subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. This, I mean, mm -hmm. I would still pick this turkey, even over a brawn turkey, if it's done wrong. That's true. That's true. Damn, it is per good. perfectly cooked. Good job, kid. Good job, baby. Mm-hmm.